is mostly divided into um, the, 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 there are aspects of that we are speaking about which relates to the process and the design to the technology itself, which you are also covering this week as you are doing your weekly task. Yeah, so there are processes uh, involved whenever you are trying to talk about technological design, technological solutions. So what we are merely doing is we are trying to look and, and, and to see what, what are the general steps which are involved. Um, it may sound a bit more complicated when you look at the term, when you look at the phrase process uh, design technology, but when you look into the steps later, it will be something that you will feel it will be something that is a bit more familiar uh, on the familiar end on your on your side. Yeah. So these are your learning outcomes, defining design and process as we go and looking at process design technology uh, and including their steps and trying understanding and trying to understand uh, what will be the, the, the areas we are moving into. Yeah. OK, all right. Oh, I thought it was something else in the chat. So El Alam says good afternoon. Hi, hello, good afternoon and hi Sardar. OK, um, the key terms which are involved. So obviously there will be the definition of processes and design and looking at uh, our technological resources towards the end as well. But prior to that, what we're going to look at is, as, uh, of course, looking at the, the two parts, two main parts of design, and one is called conceptual, and the other one is basically referred to as detailed. So someone's microphone is on, so do always double check so that you don't get into trouble or we ended up start hearing things we don't need to. So a quick question here, what is your understanding on design and process, right? So these two words have been um, uh, around, you will know these words as it is, but the first question I just want to quickly ask is, what is your understanding? So what do you understand about the word process? Yeah, so what is your understanding of the word process? Simple, straightforward word. Um, the image here, well, is just showing you in terms of how people and technology works, but the one thing that ties them together is basically the word process, yeah? And this is actually being referred to as the, sorry, you can't see so clearly here, but it says people process technology framework. So what would be your take when you are identifying a process? So Kaman says steps, Jesse says a series of steps. Um, Ching Hao says uh, a software. So I guess when you mention about a process, you mentioned software, right? Yeah, I can just leave it here. Yeah, no problem. No worries. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um, a series of steps, of course, uh, Ching Hao is identifying it as software. So software is always when you when you when you see process, you understand it as software. So an uh, interesting take on it. Um, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, Kai Feng says action, procedure, flow, the steps, steps to do something, steps taken. Okay, all right, more than one step. More than one step. Um, so a series of steps, basically, like, like some of your answers that you're sharing, yeah? Could you share the link? What is the quizzes code? Okay, some of you are already responding. Thank you very much. Uh, for those of you who normally joins class late, like say, let's say now you notice I've already started. Uh, when you look at the screen, yeah, at the bottom left here, yeah, you will always see the code at the bottom left here. So in case um, I'm just continuing the class, it's easier for you to just look into the screen on the bottom left, you should be able to see there as well. Steps, procedures, step to achieve, bunch of steps and so on, something that people do. All right, awesome. A continuation, a continuation of what exactly? So um, I guess that's why there's a, there's a, um, a question mark at the back as well. Steps to achieve something. All right, awesome. Good methods to create, act of doing something, the way to create a product. Um, well, agreed, but I guess it's more than just creating a product, right? A process can can be um, an, an a lot, there, there can be a lot of other outcomes that comes from a process. So um, a good intake, a, a, a good take of it by Sardar as well to say journey. Yeah. Um, software, okay. Changing something to something. <laughs> All right, thank you, Edric. Now, if you put a, a, a series of steps together, you basically get a process, yeah? But do remember, yeah, um, processes can also be combined, right? There are different different uh, uh, numbers of processes that you can also combine together. And after you combine all the processes together, get, guess, what you, uh, guess what do you get? 
if you have multiple processes being grouped together, what do you then call that? Anyone? You have your steps. If there are several steps, you can call this a process, right? It's basically very sequential. It's one after the other. Totally agree. But if let's say now you have multiple processes, this now makes up a what? It's a word that again, all of you know as well. It starts with the letter S and it ends with the letter M. Anyone? Starts with the letter S and ends with System, the letter M. Sir. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I heard that as well. Thank you for your answer, right? So uh, uh, the whole aspect of if you are if you're trying to identify processes it then becomes a system yeah so all this will go in a particular sequence there are different levels to it the way that we are trying to expose to you at this point so there's many different definitions here as you see the first one it says a series of actions so some of you mentioned a series of steps earlier right and what you want to achieve of course it is leading towards you are trying to achieve a specific result a series of changes, a method of producing something, a process in an instance program running in a computer. So those of you who said software agreed, that's basically uh, um, um, identifying a process as well. So I think this is quite straightforward. You're just trying to review and to identify how things work in a specific step. Now, how does this relate towards technology, right? So when you're trying to put this into perspective with technology, you have to understand that a process will be made up of a lot of different components, right? There's many different parts to it. So as highlighted here in the first point, it is the machines, equipment, devices that create and or deliver products and services. So everything that we go through, right? Every single service that you are um, um, uh, having access to, products that you have in hand, all these are backed up by process technology. Right, so therefore there must be a combination of them. It's not just looking at the processes and the series of actions alone, but looking at how machines, equipments, and different devices come together in order to achieve this. It has a very significant effect on quality, speed, dependability, flexibility, and cost. So when you start identifying your process on how you do something, all these other areas come into the picture, right? You start evaluating what is the quality. You start evaluating what is the speed the dependability, the flexibility, the cost, right? There's a lot of factors and aspects just for you to break down overall when you look into a point uh, as such, all right? So a quick question here, process is done. That's basically what processes are about. So what about design then? Yeah, so what is a design on the other hand? So when you see the word design, what comes to mind? And art, new, new look, idea, art, creating something. Ah, interesting, right? Um, the plan, structure, illustration, masterpiece. I think most of you will definitely say art. Uh, interesting, so Excel added the word creativity. A model of something to be brought to life, art, attractive structure, a plan. How something looks, yep, definitely covers that as well. A process is a project management guide used to oversee the execution of a large project. <laughs> so this is an answer from an earlier question, is it, Yuan Ming? I'm asking here what is the design? Um, creativity, art, pattern, drawing, how something looks, representation of an idea. All right, physical look of something. Um, I think whenever every, everyone talks about design, we are always referring to something that is um, on the forefront, it's always something physical and something you can see, all right? Uh, ah, interestingly, Zian, are you there? Can you switch on your mic? Hello, sir. Yes, so when you mention exterior or interior, can you give an example of the difference? Uh, maybe exterior is like, uh, like a computer. Outside is the case of the computer that is the exterior. Maybe the interior can be the motherboards, the design of the motherboards and all oh, those okay. computer parts. OK, all right. Awesome. Thank you. So I think I, I, I refer back to like what Ibrahim mentioned here, something about a physical look of something, right? So don't forget, it's not just mainly physical. Most of the time, uh, uh, when we see the word design, our, our mind, our brains go into something physical and very external. Right? But don't forget another whole aspect about design also goes into things which are internal. So one, of course, that was highlighted by ZN earlier. 
Um, some drawing idea, decoration, look and ah, okay. So Cheng Yu mentioned it. So as you can see, it's not just the looks of a product. It can be a lot about the feel of a product as well. Yeah. And when it comes to design, you, you realize that this basically happens. You are evaluating not just aspects of the design when something is physical. You also uh, identify, you also should be able to relate towards aspects of the design that can be about the feel, about emotions, about feelings, about how you, you or what is your experience about doing something. So that's why from, from if you notice uh, what it used to be, the two letters that is always being used in IT and technology, which is UI, has evolved. It's not just about user interface or what you can see alone, but it has moved on to a user. Anyone knows? It's not user interface anymore nowadays. What do they, what do they like to say instead? It's user something else. That is design technology means. OK, all right. So Yuan Meng said that is what design technology means. OK, all right. <laughs> There's many definitions to it, yeah? So thank you, Jun Yu. Thank you, Wei Huan. So from UI, it has moved on to something called UX nowadays, right? Because they realize it's not, it's not just stopping at what you look at and the physical aspects of things, right? It's the whole flow of it as well, which then is being referred to as user experience instead. The whole experience that you have using something, the whole experience that you have that when you have access to certain things, right? All right, awesome. Thank you for sharing. I think almost everyone did, but the time is up anyway. So when we look into design, on the other hand, uh, a plan, creating something, uh, making prelim preliminary sketches, sketching a pattern or outline. So a lot of you mentioned art and drawing earlier, so you're absolutely right. Um, generally, uh, in terms of um, um, overall, when you're talking about design, it needs to be something that is uh, accepted overall. Yeah. Um, look at how our phones look like today. Yeah. This is not how phones started anyway. Most of our phones all come in this exact dimension now. Right? It comes in this uh, exact particular dimension that we have now. It's always about a 20 by 9 or, a, or, a, or, a, or a, a maybe about 18 by 9 and so on and so forth. But it's, most of the time you will notice in terms of the ratio and the size of our phones are all coming in a particular um, uh, um, shape. Right? So the design overall is because, of course, for many different reasons in terms of how, how, how it fits into our hand and so on, right? So it's something that is always being looked into to, 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 to fulfill the general overall need of, uh, of something. Sardar mentioned in the chat, like feel of the luxury piece of art. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's deep. The feel of luxury piece of art. I guess it depends on what you're talking about. If it's a drawing, I'm not sure if 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 everyone here in class, me included, we can we can um, we can relate to it, right? Um, whether you are artistic enough, whether you are, I think it's a simple question. I'm I'm going to ask this question now, and everyone needs to raise your hand if you feel if you feel that you are, yeah. So rate yourself, yeah. Rate yourself from um, rate yourself from zero. Let's leave it at one. Rate yourself from one to ten on how creative you are. Yeah. Rate yourself from one to ten on how creative you are. For those who say that you are between eight, nine, and ten, yeah, eight, nine, and ten, please raise your hands. If you feel that you are creative, and if you feel that you are about eight, nine, and ten, please raise your hands. There's so many of you here and I only see one hand or oh, two. That's it. Wow, OK, all right. It looks like that's it. There's only two. It's only uh, um, uh, Muhammad Bakar and Saad. <laughs> all right, thank you. Lower your hands. Um, how many of you rate yourself between one to three then? One, two or three. Level of creativity is only about one, two and three. Do raise your hands. Wow, there's so many more of you. Not that many more. I still see a single digit. Really? Ah. Are we stopping at 13, 12? What are we stopping at? I think one or two of you are raising your hands and putting it down because I see the number going up and down, up and down. All right, so we are about at about 12 of you instead. All right, thank you. You can lower your hands. Now, um, 
I asked this question. I used to teach. I used to teach um, seven year olds. Yeah. So in Malaysia, at least seven year olds are basically grade one. Yeah. Or, or standard one, as we call it here in, in primary school. So I used to ask these questions to standard one kids. These are all seven year olds. And I asked them, so um, how creative do you think you are? And I've asked this across many classes. Yeah. Not only just one group of students. I've asked many students this question. How creative are you? And I did the same thing. Rate yourself from one to ten. Um, when I said, we, um, how many of you think you are at, uh, at a 10? Do you want to try guessing how many students raise their hands? So someone said, I'm a 10 if you are talking about the art of Dota. Mine is 3 to 5. I look at the, I look at the map of the game and see fog of war everywhere. Oh my. How many students was it as far as asking? That's about... 30 students in class. I think about 20 plus to 30 students in class, basically. Yeah. Um, Ruth says all. Oh, Sutesh says, says that as well. Almost everyone, and there's a question mark. Every A lot of things that Sutesh says is always with a question mark at the back. <laughs> Don't always be unsure. You need to be sure about yourself. Yeah. Um, I'll say 18 ish, 17 by Sardar. All right, I'm going to stop it there. Um, Ruth and Sutesh is correct. Um, everyone, every kid in class put up their hands and say that they are at the, at, the, at the number 10 for being creative, right? My question to you is that to everyone in class here today, other than the two of you who raised your hands is what happened to everyone else? You used to be so creative when you're younger. So does it mean what? Uh, the, the older you get, you become less creative. You, you become less and lesser creative. Some of you, I think I saw someone mentioning negative five and negative 10 and so on and so forth. Yeah. So. The, 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 whole, the, the whole reason I'm highlighting this is, is because creativity um, is not necessarily how, there's only, not only one way of looking at creativity. Yeah, and I, I like to mention creativity because creativity and innovation has a lot to do with design, right? Has a lot to do with design. Sometimes it's about being creative. It's about thinking out of the box. It's about, it's about um, um, the ability to then look at things differently from different perspectives. And it's, it's just a matter of that. So you can actually look at something and evaluate a design from many different ways. So the last point here says a process of visualizing and planning the creation of objects, interactive systems, buildings, vehicles. Of course, there's many way, there are many aspects of design that can be looked at. Yeah. Yeah, when we get older, we are not that much creative. Uh, I don't agree, Yan Wing, to be honest. Sutesh says we look at so many other people who are creative and doubt ourselves. Um, that I would like to agree. Yeah, you start measuring yourself to your own imaginary uh, level of things, right? Um, I will get creatives in some parts of my life, not others though. Do D O E? Are you, are you serious in terms of your spelling there? Um, I never thought I, I was creative because the first thing that comes to mind is art class, and my mind is usually blank. Everyone in this class are just being okay. All right, moving on. So when we are when we are trying to, to 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 break design down and look into how design and technology merges together, right? So as being shown here, skills and abilities to engage positively the design, the development, the application, the implementation, and to see how things work together. I think that's that's the essential idea here, right? So a lot of things are working well together because of this one word, because of the word of design, right? You 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 incorporate some. Um, rules on design. You incorporate some uh, uh, some principles of design into the into into a solution, for example, and of course pairing this with technology, you realize you, you, you are able to go far with it. And obviously, we'll, uh, this can then be applied to the problems encountered in in any different areas. To be honest, yeah, it's not necessarily just something which is physical. It is the look and feel about things as well, right? Uh, you evaluating an application or software that can be considered as well, yeah. As we become older, we have more experience and therefore we become more creative. Yeah, that, that is the idea behind it, Saad. Um, I guess but, uh, um, it depends on how everyone uh, looks at it overall. Yeah, so we have looked at process, we have looked at design. So now we are trying to combine them together and to see where can we go from here. Yeah, so there are several steps in place when you're looking at uh, uh, the design process overall. Right. It always starts off with this. And I think this is something everyone needs to remember because this does not only apply for technology. This applies for everything you are facing, everything that you do. 
your even things that you do on your day to day basis, yeah, um, it can also be 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 uh, incorporating these steps as well. It's very important to uh, look into step number one, defining the what, yeah, what is the problem here? What is the issue here? What is the root problem here? What exactly are you trying to solve? So that is the very first step. Of course, then it follows with uh, collecting information. You need to do some level, uh, some some form of research must take place. You then start you then start going into ideation where you identify, you analyze ideas, you generate them, you develop a solution based on those ideas. You then of course present your ideas so that you can gain some feedback, right? You analyze them further. And of course, last but not least, based on that feedback, you improve your design. So this is what I was talking about earlier. The steps are simple, right? The steps are quite straightforward. You identify the problem, you do some research, come up with ideas, you then uh, finalize your idea into a particular solution by building a model or building a prototype. Then of course, you need to get some feedback. Some form of feedback must be must be in place here as well. You improve it and then it becomes a huge, uh, it becomes a cycle basically, because whatever that you have created, you can then identify other problems from it as well, right? right? From your own solution, okay? And I wonder what's going on in the chat. <laughs> All right, so Samuel said something and Sadar said something. Wei Huan, what's this about? TikTok famous team kicked out of office, instantly regrets it. <laughs> All right, I may not be updated on what's going on there. I will leave it to the rest of you to then decide whether that is something appropriate to look at as of now. Um, so when we are discussing about design, the two major categories of it that look that goes into it are these two words. So the next two slides we're going to look at these two main phases of design. Yeah, one is the conceptual part of it where you come up with the ideas, but there are also its own sub steps with, uh, within conceptual design. And once that is done, you then move over to what we consider detailed design, right? Because a lot of um, um, the, the areas has been clarified and has been solved under conceptual, which then takes you over to detailed design. Okay, so therefore, first one is of course talking about the conceptual design. You saw some of those processes earlier already. Uh, these are all just some of the details being given. There are some customer requirements that you must clarify first. You need to uh, choose an underlying technology based on whatever requirements that comes along. Then you start doing your research, right? You collect data and information, you design the specs, now specifications here can go across both. It can go across what other functionalities and features involved, as well as what the physical appearance and aesthetics are. All right. Now, there may be some of you who will look at this process and go like, well, it's quite standard. It's something that uh, you, you basically need to do when you're coming up with uh, uh, when you're conceptualizing an idea, for example. But to be honest, I think a lot of people overlook these because it's too simple and straightforward. A lot of people overlook these yeah and everything here linking it back to what the requirements are that's why you see that word first first identify the requirements uh, otherwise your solution uh, the main question that goes back to you is who your who is your solution for that's very important yeah so when you evaluate it further he, at this level as well it's important to identify it basically right um and this can be very subjective to everyone Right, this can be very subjective to every person. Um, I will. I'm not sure. I keep seeing it in my in my social media feed recently. What is the 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 reason? Is it what Miss Grand? Is it Miss Grand or Miss Universe? Miss Grand Finals? I don't know what is it called. <clears throat> oh no, this is not the one. What is that reason one that is is being featured on it now? is it or oh, probably it's Miss Universe because it just happened oh yeah I think it's Miss Universe sorry about that okay so now I, I'm using this as a, as a an example because all I want to ask is um, when you look at Miss Universe this year right so how many of you will consider her to be Miss Universe how many of you think that she is the most beautiful woman on earth in the universe, basically, since the title is called Miss Universe, um, you will basically get a lot of very, very um, different responses that comes out of that, right? Why? Because this can be something subjective, right? So my statement here is simple. Is Miss Universe the most beautiful woman in the world, right? 
So then when you are thinking about that, you start realizing that, okay, different people may have different responses. Some may look at look at the Miss Universe this year and then have different uh, different responses to it and different concepts or different perceptions about it. So why this is important? Because then when you're identifying the functions and features and physical appearance of something, you cannot just deem that this is something everyone is going to agree with because it still goes back to who your customer is, who your client is. Yeah, You generate ideas after having all this information. From your ideas, you, uh, you know that you have some alternatives now. You have, you have generated some ideas uh, uh, across. You finalize a particular solution, right? You choose a solution and then you must create something that is being called a design brief. So design briefs are very popular um, within the designing uh, 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 process because then this is what you present back to your customer based on the requirements. You have done your research. You have identified what the specifications are. You have come up with ideas. Then you have come up with your, your, your final solution, your final idea overall. Yeah. So in the design brief, it basically explains everything. It explains so what is the purpose overall? You, uh, what uh, developed ideas were there? Um, were there any design constraints? Uh, of course, there can be a mock-up or a drawing, or some will even call it something like a storyboard as well. Yeah. So when you go through that particular process, so this is where you try to conceptualize the overall idea. So in design technology, this process is important to go through, right? Because then you go through it in a particular sequence overall. Some responses in the chat. Everyone in the world is beautiful. Everyone has a different idea of the term, therefore different opinions and views. So what some people see as dirt can be gold to others. Okay, all right. Anyway, <laughs> I totally agree, right? So, so, but there are, of course, but there are, there are aspects of this that you will want to uh, um, try understanding to then see that you must be able to address a specific requirement that comes from your customer or that comes from your client in this sense yeah who exactly are you creating the solution for so from conceptual the uh, conceptual aspect of it you notice that we ended with the design brief right it's basically a proposal i would like to call it that goes back to your customer to say that all right so this is what we have clarified this is where we are at now so once that get, uh, gets approved you then move on to the detailed design part of it the concept is done conceptually everything is agreed to now we go into the, de the detailed design. So when you're creating uh, uh, the design, obviously a prototype or a, or, a, or a simulation is involved. Once you have the prototype and, and, and simulation, you evaluate and you identify if there are any issues, any errors, any bugs, right? And uh, based on that, you will then run certain modification. You make certain changes which is necessary to fix those problems. You develop the particular design, actual design is finalized, and of course, then you go into implementation overall. Last but not least, when you're done with this, right, you then prepare to communicate the design and gain acceptance of the design. So this is where you then go back to your clients and customer, you present it back to them and tell them uh, and, and find out from them uh, 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 the final approval from them to say that this is everything here is a good to go. Okay. So it is unlikely that you are creating a solution without going through this whole process of reworking, modifying, identifying errors. Um, all these are important to be done before. Yes, you might create everything towards the end. You communicate the design to your customers and find out that there are more things to work on. There are more further modifications to do. It's fine. That happens as well. But more importantly is if a question goes to you to say that, um, was this even looked at before? Was it something that has uh, that, that, that was highlighted and that needs to be solved before? You must be able to say that you have done at least the first round of it because you have evaluated your own design, you have identified whatever errors that comes along and you have modified and reworked whatever necessary. Yeah? Only towards the end then, you will then present this whole solution uh, to be evaluated finally by the, the clients and so on. So I'm sharing with you this image simply because um, all this actually goes back to a simple idea. All this actually goes back to what? Who is your target? Who are you creating this solution for? Right? Identifying who makes a very huge difference overall. Yeah. So when you are able to then look at it in that way, when you start asking your, 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 yourself some questions, um, this is of course then identifying different categories like geographic uh, details, psychographic details, demographic, 
behavioral details. All this will help you understand who your target is and therefore you are creating and you're designing a solution that basically fits them uh, best, right? And identifying this would be something that, that, that requires a lot of different questions. What does your ideal customer look like? What would lead them to want to buy? What does their buying process look like? How can you get your brand or your item or your solution in front of them, right? So a lot of areas of the design process and, and the design uh, technology processes, a lot of it goes back into you identifying your target properly, you knowing who the solution is basically for. All right. So I highlighted this. I think it, if I wasn't, if I'm not wrong, I highlighted this last week as well. Your perspectives in technology assignment, this PT assignment that you have currently. Remember that you are creating it for uh, you, you. You need to understand that you are create. You are basically creating the report for someone who is reading it who may not necessarily be familiar with technology. When I read it, it's a bit unfair because then of my background. Because the, uh, uh, the idea here is that that report should be given. I think I give, give, give all of you this example as well. I should be able to give this report to your parents. Yeah. And your parents will look at it and say, OK, I totally get what are you, what, what are you doing here and what from the weekly tasks, from all those topics as, that, that, you, that you go through, they are able to read your work and say that, all right, I know exactly what's going on. I know what the message is here. If you don't achieve that, then that is how, that is how you screw your assignment up. Yeah? Um, and I've noticed with some of your weekly tasks uh, before this as well, especially those who did uh, week three, yeah? you started going into, into, into very complicated uh, technological backgrounds. You started using phrases and terminologies that Sometimes when I ask you in class, you are you, you you yourself, you are not sure what the terminology means, right? So be careful with things like that, right? So you need to put in things and simplify the ideas so that the, the, the information is delivered easier. So process design uh, definition, uh, an approach of breaking down a large project into manageable parts, creative problem solving. So when, you, when we look at both of these together, the process design uh, itself is trying to break it down into its components. So I mentioned this earlier as well, right? Activity of determining the workflow, the equipment needs, implementation requirements, any, any of the, any, any components or subcomponents are the ones that, that is supporting the whole solution overall. All right, so from the um, um, design process that you saw earlier, this was the one I showed you earlier as well. You come up with the problem, you do your research, you come up with ideas, you finalize and build something out of it, you present it, you get some feedback, you improve, and then the cycle goes along. Same thing that you see here as well. So just to quickly share some examples with everyone. Um, now, the, 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 high level of the, the high level of the process is actually um, generic. Right, it's uh, it's something that uh, you you get it and you understand. But of course, when you put it into uh, a perspective in terms of where you want to use it, you can then break it down further. You can break down some of those processes into its uh, um, specific areas that you want to go into. So one one aspect here, as you can see, is uh, notice these words which are spelled a bit more uh, vertically here. Right, ideation, specification, realization. So there is that three main phases as you go. Of course, within each of those phases, you have certain things that you like to do so that you know what you are evaluating, right? You know what you are achieving with every round that you go as well. Um, another example here is then mentioning about the design process for engineering, for example, right? So again, come up with a problem, do your research, um, um, specify and make sure that you understand what the requirements are. You brainstorm and come up with ideas, you develop a prototype, you test it, you then fix it across, then you communicate the particular result, right? And you must and 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 don't don't downplay the last step that you see here. This in a lot of times can be very, very important on how you communicate the solution, communicate the overall results are. Right? So again and again, you see a, a very, a very similar flow. Yeah. So the, the slide before shows you are something that is a bit more complicated, but the one that you see here now, as you can see, um, it is essentially going into the same steps uh, again anyway. So the only difference here that you notice is that there is a loop here that is going on, whereby if 
after you test a solution, it may have not fully uh, uh, meet all of the requirement. You then go back into the, you know, as they always say, you go back to the drawing board, you start brainstorming again, you develop a prototype again, and then see whether the solution meets the requirements. If it does, then you communicate it over and you deliver your solution basically. Example for a, bis uh, for a business, right? So terminology is being used here from mobilizing, understanding, design, implementing, and of course, managing as you go. You prepare a business model, and then you do your research, you come up with the ideas, you then start designing and creating a solution out of it. Obviously, this is where uh, you, are, you are testing to see whether the, the business model is the best and uh, whether the alternatives that you come up with is the best idea and so on. Some form of an implementation takes place. A prototype is then being, uh, some pilot is being done, right? Where you are, you are testing this solution further. And of course, once that is being done, then, then you know you have finalized everything. And this is where you communicate the, the, the overall result to the customers or to reveal some of this information uh, over to, to who the target audience are. So the overall technological uh, design process, of course, the process in which was created and completed. Um, technological design is like scientific investigation. All it wants you to do is basically to break down your steps and to make sure you follow each, each accordingly, right? If you come up with a solution, to be honest, the very first question anyone can easily ask you is that, oh, all right, so this is your solution. What exactly is the problem that you are trying to solve? And you, and you will recall that, oh, that's the first step. Right? The first step is you must define your problem very clearly. It's, if your problem is not clear, is not specific, then you realize you may be going everywhere. Yeah. Um, uh, this is something a lot of your seniors are going through as well with their final year project. And especially students that I'm evaluating, I will always ask them, what exactly is the problem that you're trying to solve here? What is the proposed solution uh, uh, supposedly? So some students are saying, oh, I want to help students do better then I will just look straight at them and say, that is not specific, that is very generic, right? Just help students do better. What does that exactly mean? What is helping here? What is do better here, right? So you need to be specific in relation to that. And that's why they relate it towards scientific investigation. You are breaking things down so that they are clearer. Process in which most new technologies are developed. So most of them will definitely go through something like that. That's why creativity and innovation comes into play. And obviously, both processes rely on evidence and reason following a logical sequence of steps. So you saw that just now, it was repeated several times, so you should be aware in terms of what that does. All right, so um, this uh, is from MIT Technology Review, um, one of the more popular and more reliable resources you can look at when it comes to discussions of technology, new, uh, new uh, news, latest news of technology, and so on. So this was posted slightly a bit earlier this year. It was back in uh, it was back in February, uh, but they were identifying things that was uh, a lot of different breakthrough of, of technologies that has been specifically achieved uh, for the year, right? So you saw you see all of this. Um, you see batteries. You see uh, um, contact tracing. Uh, uh, thanks to the uh, thanks to COVID and the pandemic, this is something that has improved a lot. Um, hyper accurate positioning remote everything, multi-skill AI, you even see TikTok recommendation algorithms here. Uh, and of course, there's another, another uh, source of power that's called green uh, hydrogen. So they have identified different breakthrough of technologies. And the reason I'm showing this to you here is that a lot of these as solution that is being, um, that, that, that is being created uh, uh, this particular year, all goes through a very specific design process the design process technology to then uh, come up with the solution that you see today. Yeah. I think there's another link I wanted to share with you. Um, future technology, 22 ideas that are about to change the world. Um, th so this is another one that, that highlights in terms of um, there's, there's, there's ways of looking at things a bit more differently, right? Um, thinking out of the box definitely comes along uh, uh, um, to then propose certain types of solutions. You see airports for drones and flying taxis because there's so many of them and more and more organizations are using them. Then it looks like you need a specific airport just for all these different uh, 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 devices and uh, transport transportation technologies. Yeah, smart sutures, energy storing bricks, sweat powered smart watches 
self-healing living concrete. We spoke a bit of this when we we're talking about manufacturing technology, living robots, tactile VR, internet for everyone, heart monitoring t-shirt. Right. So a lot of these are uh, like that came along. Uh, is is all because now you are looking at the technology and you ask yourself the same question: Is there a problem with this technology? If there is, then we need to go and do some research and 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 analyze it and try coming up with some ideas. Right. So what is the problem? What are you trying to solve? And then that the whole process takes place again. Car batteries that charge in ten minutes. Um, I was just looking at phones recently and I realized it's the same thing as well. How fast? How fast can you charge your phone now? Do, do you do you realize that how that has changed? Uh, from how what it was before to what it is today, right? So I think that the highest that I know that it's it's a, a phone can be charged from zero to a hundred percent in under twenty minutes. I think it was fifteen, fifteen or, or sixteen or seventeen uh, minutes basically. Plus one for this module survey relating to other modules. Oh, okay, all right. I was wondering why why is there a plus one there? But anyway. 40 cool and awesome inventions you should know about. Um, I'm going to leave this. I, I just gave you this link because I want you to just run through it and to see what kind of changes uh, technology has brought along. Yeah, what kind of changes technology has brought along for the different uh, types of devices or even products that we have uh, basically today. Yeah, so there are some interesting ones here uh, as well. Uh, on the other hand, there are, there are the ones that may look a bit more futuristic. Right, so this one is uh, um, a smart scanning uh, tool. You can easily copy paste certain things. Uh, this has been actually around quite a while. If you guys are shopping on Shopee or Lazada, you will find all these products already there. Yeah, uh, and so on. Right, so these are just examples for you to then look at. So Tina says, unless that battery is fake, lol. Which battery are you talking about that is fake? <laughs> All right, so we are going to I'm just going to take you through the technological design process, right? I keep showing you the process earlier because I want you to start with the bigger idea, right? With the with the much more um, higher level view of it. So now we are going to go through these six steps that, 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 I, that I, I have been repeating to you, but we are going to go into detail all the six of them. Yeah, so the first one, obviously, you remember was Solving a problem, you need to identify the need. What is the need here? What is the problem here? What is the opportunity here? Right? So that's the main thing that you need to solve. Um, I'm not sure how many of you, um, uh, how many of you have your own setup of, um, can I see a show of, of hands in class? How many of you have built your own um, desktop before? You built your own PC. How many of you have built your own PC before? Anyone in class? No? doesn't matter, you can be in business, you can be in IT, you can be in engineering. Um, this was something quite common before, as long as probably if you just game. So only two of you in class. All right, anyway, so maybe the example will only relate a bit more to the two of you, but not everyone else. But let's say you are building, um, you are building uh, your own PC. Yeah, you want to fully customize the build of your own PC, which means your own desktop uh, uh, that, you, that you want to build and have at home. You notice that these, these steps here will definitely relate to it. Identify the needs and target, break a large problem into smaller, uh, uh, easier to understand pieces relating the project. So one of the main questions for you to ask is definitely, what do you need this uh, desktop for? What is this computer going to be used for? If you end up finding out that you're going to mainly use it for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and just surfing the web and watching YouTube, then you should be creating a solution to match that. But if you're using it for other purposes, then you have to you have to address it differently, right? So the first step is quite straightforward. You need to identify the needs first, and secondly, uh, 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 from the needs itself, what you then move on to is you move on to then identifying the problem, right? State the root of the problem. What is the cause of the problem um, overall? Yeah. I will highlight. I will just identify a simple problem for everyone uh, uh, for everyone to think about. Um, the problem is you don't have time. You don't have enough time, right? Right. Everyone, all has, at some point of their life, has basically said this: there is not enough time. So, but is everyone's root cause of this problem the same? You're going to find out. It's going to be very different. But everyone's problem at that level sounds the same. Yeah, all of us have a similar problem. We always don't have enough time. But when you really go down to the root of the issue. Right, then you will find out there's many different problems. 
some of you will say, oh, you will end up finding out, uh, well, because I have a lot of distractions. Someone else will then find out that, ah, well, Bill, well, uh, um, I have a lot of commitments. Or someone else will then find out, I have actually a lot of responsibilities. And yet, those root problems will be very, very different. And then again, addressing them will be quite different as well. Yeah? Break a large problem into smaller, easier to understand pieces. So you see that as a step definitely here as well. So Sarda says laziness. Yeah. So even if it's laziness, I will ask you to break it down as well. A lot of you can say, yeah, you are lazy. But what does that exactly mean? What does being lazy means? You'll find out that everyone's perception and definition of being lazy is different. So where does that bring us to then? So that's why I'm saying take that problem, break it down into smaller pieces. That's the first thing you need to do. Otherwise, you cannot solve it. Otherwise, I'll just go to Sardar and say, Sardar, you identify as lazy, right? So solve it now. And I'm quite sure Sardar will look at me and say, I do not know how to solve that because you haven't broken down that problem to a smaller issue yet, to smaller chunks that you can then address. The third step is you need to do research, right? I think this is very relevant. You need to do research. You need to learn how to gather information right gather related data important information and of course more importantly is filter out what is needed what is the most important uh, for example yeah um a quick question here how good are you at researching yeah how good are you at finding information and so on and so forth i was just trying out this gif thingy and i'm not sure i think it should work so you should be able to see from left to right, it says, I'm freaking awesome, I'm good, I'm bad, really, really bad. And of course, uh, so this can be a bit more creepier if you know who this is. <laughs> All right. I'm leaving the timer on, it depends on who wants to. So, um, okay, I see 17 of you said you're good. Five of you do consider yourself freaking awesome. 13 of you said you're bad at it. And eight of you said you're just um, you're just a noob. <laughs> All right, now this is honestly one of the most basic skill. And by the time you finish studying, I'm not just talking about foundation. By the time you finish at least getting your bachelor's degree, it's important for you to then see researching is actually a skill. Yeah, researching is actually a skill. Look at that. Look, there's easily 21 of you who then say that you do not know how to research. You do not know how to look for information, how to gather information. So it is evidently a skill. The first skill that you that that that, that the first thing that you definitely need to address for sure is how do you Google? Just ask yourself that question. How do you Google? Have you used advanced search before? Have you tried filtering through your, your search before? Have you gone past the first page of your Google search result before? Right? So it can be sim as simple questions as that. If you haven't, then obviously. Um, um, I would have to say then you then start seeing why do you belong under your bed and uh, uh, you're a noob, right? Um, I see something in the chat. I think Sardar, okay, Sardar is giving us some. Okay, all right, I will, I will avoid that. Uh, yeah, I don't have a clue who the guy on the far right is. Oh, you don't? Okay, all right, I'll, I will leave it to you if you're curious enough to go and find out. So Samuel is saying, can you teach us academic research skills? <laughs> you are taking that now, right? What do you mean? Um, I did look past page one of Google and I felt weird. <laughs> All right, so that's where that's where you you don't know what you're looking for in particular, right? Um, I've always uh, I I think I remember teaching just about Google search to a bunch of students before, and there's many different things you can try doing there, right? And I think filtering the information that you find is the first thing that you should definitely do. Google is very proud. Every time you do a search, they show you that there are 360 million uh, results. There are 247,832 uh, results found for your uh, search word. But what do you look at? You look at 10 links and that's it, right? So why do they need to find 247,000 results for you if you're only looking at 10? Think about it, yeah, think about it. Um, all right, so Tina says, um, well, how do you classify a person who only needs a picture to find out everything? <laughs> I think you can do an excellent job at it. I felt like I was getting into the dark web, like a brand new unknown. Okay, all right. <laughs> Random comments about it. So 
when um, after you're done with researching right and finding information you need to then start considering how do you design the solution because then based on the ideas that you have found from your research right so this is where you come up with ideas based on the research and information you come up with the ideas easiest way of course is through brainstorming uh, sketching putting it out writing it on paper really makes a huge difference because something that is just that you're thinking about now becomes a bit more black and white per se so that's why you even see things like storyboarding uh, coming up with a step-by-step -step to see how things work will definitely make a difference so once your idea is done you need to build a prototype yeah you obviously need to build a prototype uh, as and when you go through uh, the step-by-step -step when you're building something to simulate what the solution is like you need to let someone you need to let your targeted uh, market or the targeted people that you're building this for to know what is it like yeah so you build the technology, um, you have to identify and to see how are you putting all of your ideas together in a, in a final product, in a final result of it. So it will, it will, of course, to a lot of extent, involves modeling, construction of part of the process. Uh, it contains the most technological problems because now you are finally trying to put your solution together based on whatever you have found in the first uh, few steps. Yeah, um, Experimentation, of course, is here. There's a lot of trial and error. Uh, in many in many ways as well. So from your final result, of course, you will then go through this very, very painful words, troubleshooting, right? Um, as the word itself basically means you are shooting for trouble. You are looking for trouble because you are trying to evaluate your solution. Troubleshooting, doing debugging and redesigning where it's necessary because you may find out that there's a bit of a problem, right? And based on that, you're going to move forward because you are fixing that problem as you go and you're going to continuously improve it. So once your model is complete, you begin testing, you test with your final uh, uh, users. That's why I mentioned things like pilot or coming up with the testing. You need to test it out with a, with a, with, 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 uh, uh, um, with a bunch of uh, your users that basically reflect who your final uh, customers and clients are, right? Um, opportunity to make the changes. So based on the feedback, you redesign everything and you repeat all of this until all of the issues are solved, right? Until everything is all basically done. So from that, of course, um, you move towards the end, which is to communicate the solution. How do you present all of this back to the uh, to, 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 to the overall um, um, customer and clients for them to then see that this is the whole process that you have gone through. This is what you have done. And you are showing them that you have gone in detail to consider all aspects, to consider everything. Yeah. And once you have done that, it will be you'll be able to move on a bit uh, easier. And the people that you are presenting this to will be a bit more convinced, right? Because you're not just coming up with an idea and then building it and then showing it to them just for them to, to, to ask you back a question and go like, oh, did you know that what you just built is already available? Or did you know that what you just built is actually something that uh, 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 is already there, but then there's still a lot of problems with it, right? So that's the last, that, that is something you don't want to hear from uh, your own clients or customers, okay? All right, the last part of this uh, topic is technological resources. So when it comes to the resources, uh, technological resources, there are many different categories that we have to look into. Right, I'll, I'll bring you directly into this. So when it comes into looking at technological resources, you must take into account a lot of uh, areas, the people, the information involved, the materials, the energy, the capital, the time, and not to forget, of course, what brings all this together is the tools and the machines. So we'll run through the first one. The first one then goes into the people, right? So people, of course, they are the, they are the ones who are experiencing the problem. They are the ones creating the solution. They are the ones who will be receiving the solution at the end of it. So obviously it goes back to the people. So remember my slide earlier that shows you about the um, who exactly is your targeted group, who exactly is your targeted market. It does go back to the people because you must remember that um, uh, the, as part of your of developing the solution, you need to know exactly who is this for. So breaking that down gives you a clearer picture, right? So. A simple and yet straightforward one. The first resource is obviously the people. Second one is the information. What exactly is required, right? Because then uh, once you are you are trying to go through this whole process from identifying the problem all the way till the end, uh, uh, um, basically communicating the solution, you must be able to see um, what needs to be done, 
what are the processes involved, and so on and so forth. So information basically guides you through all that. So you see here it says, people need to know what to do and how to do it. Information begins as data, raw facts, and figures, but of course, once it is being collected, you filter it, you analyze it, you, you, you um, as the words here also show, you classify it, you calculate it, you store it, you ret retrieve it. This is where your own analysis come into the picture. Yeah, and that is, I think, a keyword for everyone to remember uh, uh, last week and this week as well, and especially this week, I've given all the comments of your weekly task and I've highlighted that you did not analyze it enough on your end, right? The information is there. So this is what I mean. A lot of you found the information online. You take the information, you put it into your assignment. And then you put a citation and reference there. The next thing that you do, you do the same thing again. You go and find some information somewhere else. You take it, you put it into your assignment. So when I say that your group analysis is not there, it's because then, okay, fine, you might have found like, Info A, Info B, Info C, Info D, and as you go, you find all this information. But what does this all mean, right? Where, uh, what do you think of it? Is it something that is, um, have you tried analyzing it and then giving your comments? Is it something good? Is it something bad? Is it something structured? Is it not? Is it something that is, can be improved, right? So your own analysis comes from those perspectives, okay? That is your second technological research, uh, uh, resource. A quick question here. Do you know this concept? I think I don't really need to get everyone to respond to this. I'm going to quickly skip it because it's almost 5.30 and I have to move on to your next topic anyway. But the next topic is a bit shorter, so don't worry. No idea, no idea, no idea. I'm going to show you the next slide anyway. Then you will see it there. Ah, some of you know that. Uh, interesting. It's like the name of the game. Anyway, I'm skipping here. Yeah? Go in, go out. <laughs> so the next slide basically shows it to you. Um, oops. What is that? Leaderboard needed for this. So it's basically called uh, garbage in, garbage out. Right. So if the, the information that you are collecting, you don't collect it properly, you don't filter it properly. Um, this is just like you doing your assignment as well. Right. Um, when all of what when the only thing that all of you are doing is you go online, you do a search, you use some keywords to do the search, you get the information, you just take this information and put it into your assignment. I call that garbage in, garbage out onto your assignment. Yeah, because then I do not know what is that information for. Yeah, fine. Good, you found this, you found that, you found that the components are this, you found that the processes are as such, you found that this is something the company has done or the technology has done. But finding it alone is only half of the story, right? Because that is where it shows that you are good at at least gathering the information. But next part is for you to evaluate your information, okay? So the next technological resource is obviously the materials. So when we talk about materials here, this plays a very huge role when you're coming up with a final solution because what kind of materials will you be using will make a lot of difference. And most of the time, the discussion goes into what materials will go into raw materials. Yeah, and there's always different types of raw materials for you to consider when you're coming up with a solution as well. Um, of course, when we mention raw materials here, you notice a lot of it are then speaking more about physical materials. So therefore, the, um, the, the, the final product here is then something physical, yeah? So materials will make a huge difference. Just look at our, my number one example, we'll always go back to um, um, our clothing, right? What kind of materials make up our clothing? It all started out with cotton, but today you will find out that there's so many different materials, right? Something which is synthetic, something which is called microfiber, something that is called uh, uh, um, um, polyester. There's so many different types of materials and the different materials will then provide different solutions at the end of the day. Um, on top of raw materials, of course, there are some which are then referred to as synthetic materials, right? I just highlighted that just now. So synthetic materials will then go into what are being called mostly as man-made materials. Yeah, they are made of different uh, 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 aspects of it. Of course, um, the, these resources are much more. The reason that these resources are being used today, because to be honest, is this point here. Synthetics are not as costly as natural materials because creating it is cheaper. 
And again, when it comes to quantity, it's even cheaper when you consider the economies of scale as well. Yeah. So synthetic materials are also being considered as a technological resource. And of course, then we go into the tools and machines, right? So what tools are available for you to then come up with a solution will make a huge difference as well. So using these different tools, these tools can come in many different forms as well. Yeah, it can be machinery, it can be your computers, it can be devices, it can be uh, uh, different aspects of what machineries are, are involved as well. And the next resource, of course, is energy. Um, nothing much to talk about here because next week I'm going to cover energy and uh, uh, power and energy resources with you uh, for the next topic as well. But evidently, energy resources will also be something that must be included as a technological resource uh, because there's many consideration uh, 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 of it in relation to your solution. Yeah. Um, capital, last but not least, of course, money moves the world, as they always say, right? So there's many different forms of capital here. When you look into it, capital does not only come uh, through something monetary, but something that is non-monetary as well. So some examples given here, stocks, buildings, machineries, land, assets, all these assets will be considered um, capital as well. All right. And of course, with costs, you see time. So time is another resource that is just as important. Again, all this is basically drawing a line for you, drawing your constraints and boundary for you, right? Because time can be a constraint or a boundary. Cost can be a, 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 a restriction or a boundary as well, right? So that's the idea that you're trying to draw around to then know that based on all these factors, you will then be able to come up with your solution better. Okay, all right. Last question, then I'm going to give you a quick break, maybe just a quick five minute break, and we'll come back to do the other topic. Out of all the resources I've shown you just now, which one do you think is the most important technological resources? You saw the materials, you saw the people, you saw the energy and resources, you saw the cost and time. So which one will you consider the most important technological resource? Humans, energy, time, people, 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 money. Time, energy, people, people and time, people, energy and resources. Not many of you mentioned money. I, I see capital, yeah, but not, not, not as many as I would have thought. People, all right. I would agree with most of you. I would agree with the majority of you to say that honestly, it goes back to the people. Yeah. And you, you, you would have heard me repeating that earlier as well. It all goes back into who is this solution for? If you're coming up with a product, then you want to go through the technological design process to build that product for a, a, a targeted market, a, ta a, a targeted group of people. Then it really depends on who they are and why should your solution be in a certain way? Yeah. Someone mentioned time. All right, okay, I will end the question here. So in my humble opinion, to be honest, I would still go back to the first technological resource I covered with you, which is to cover people, right? The problem starts with people. The solution ends with people as well. So it does go back to that uh, overall, okay? So Samuel say, what about information? Yeah, no one remember, no, no, no one bothered about information because information again can be secondary. So the reason you hear me saying that um, people is the most important uh, uh, technological resource because of that, my last sentence, the problem and the need starts with people, right? And at the end of it, your solution is being communicated, is being created for people as well. So clarifying that, the rest of it are all, I will consider more of a supporting resource. Yeah, it's more of a supporting resource. Are there still need new responses coming in? I thought I already stopped it. Okay. All right. I'm ending this here. Okay. I'm ending this here now and I am switching this on. so that everyone can get in because for the other half of the class, we are covering technology life cycle. I will copy the code and put it into the chat. 
but like I told everyone, you should be able to see it here as well. But I'm not pasting it in this chat. Yeah, I am pasting it. Oh, I shouldn't have pressed start right there. But let me just copy the link. I'm ending the call here now. So obviously that ends the recording and so on and so forth as well. Everyone is going for a five minute break. So it's 5.37 on my clock now. So we are all coming back at 5.40. I'll just make it 5.45 then. Yeah, everyone is coming back into the call at 5.45, but you are not coming back into this call. I think some of you would have noticed that that was what I did uh, for this week's class. So if you notice, oops, let's wait for this to load. So if you notice, there is another channel that I've created the call for 5.30 to 6.30. After I end this call now, all of you are going to go to technology lifecycle and you are going to join this call after you come back from the break. Yeah, and I'm pasting the code for quizzes there now anyway. Okay. So. Um, I'll switch this. People are most important because if there's no people, then no money. All right, okay. So there will be two attendances, I guess. No, not really. There's basically one attendance uh, overall. Uh, but if you're if you're trying to say that then there are two different attendance reports from two different videos, then yes, you are correct. Okay, all right. So 5.45 is already 5.38 now on my clock. So I'll see everyone. I'm going to end the call now and I'll see you in the other call, which I already see a few of you joining. <laughs> Uh, at 5.45, yeah? Take a quick bathroom and brain break. We'll, we'll come back at 5.45. Ciao, everyone. Ciao. <laughs>